Hey, it's me, Tammy B. Welcome back, you guys. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm so excited. <laughs> um, do I say Happy New Year already? Happy New Year, you guys. This is my first video of the new year. And it's so funny, I got excited when I was coming to do the video, y'all. But I'm so not ready for life, y'all. <laughs> I had all this stuff supposed to, I was supposed to do. It's day six, right? And I ain't done none of it, y'all. So... I'm about to just uh, keep on going. All right, you guys. So this is the review for the haves and the have nots, y'all. I was so excited that it came on yesterday. And it's so funny. I've been waiting for it since September, but it wasn't until I really got home. I was like, oh, yes, today. So I'm going to get into the review. Um, I try. I don't know if I should say this. Um, I try to do have and have nots on a uh, bigger platform. So I submitted my like videos and stuff to this uh, site that does like these reviews. So hopefully they call me back. I was hoping they call me back before the new year, but whatever. All right, so let's get into it, y'all. I don't even know what it's called, but who cares? Let's just get on into it, y'all. So boom, we start right where we left off, y'all. We got a dead Quincy on the floor. And I don't know why I just don't think he dead or I didn't think he was dead, but we'll see you guys. I thought they was going to come back with the hully gully, like just making it seem like it was the next day, a beautiful day, and yada, yada, yada. You know how they be trying to make us forget, but I'm glad they started right where they left off with dead Quincy in the living room, y'all. So Jeffrey all shook up, and he like, is he dead? Is he dead? And Candace was like, um, she gonna nudge him with his her foot, and he didn't move. I'm like, that don't make let you know if he dead. Mind you, she a lawyer, not a doctor. Maybe she don't know how to check polls. Maybe you two freaked out to check polls. Hey, I don't know how to check polls, but I don't know. I want to put a finger under his nose or put my hand on his chest or something, but whatever. Candace little nudge of the foot let them know that he dead, supposedly, right? So Jeffrey calls the police, y'all, and Candace snatches the phone and throw it in the garbage disposal. Jeffrey is freaking out, y'all, but I mean, who wouldn't? Like, I don't know, I didn't watch so many murder and crime shows, I kind of feel like I would have it under control, but I know I probably would be sweating while I'm cleaning up the crime scene. <laughs> But, I mean, my first instinct is never to call the cops. I mean, I, I know that's probably bad if a cop hear that. But I'm pretty sure if y'all come from where I come from, y'all know why that's my last person that I'm going to ever call. But, you know, whatever. His mom is a lawyer, so he thought to call the cops. But she like, no, um, there's no way we could say that this is self-defense. So um you know we need to take care of this her ourselves now i do agree with jeffrey like i ain't no killer how we gonna donate a body so i understand or uh do away with the body so i understand his apprehension but i think candace is right i mean that's your baby daddy you're in a custody case your brother just beat him up like and like she said we stabbed him multiple times why did they stab him multiple times Je jeffrey is a killer he could have stabbed him once that's jeffrey fault for stabbing him all the time nobody told him to do that but I think Candace stabbed the ones too, right? So whatever. So that's that. And um, you know how cell phones got signal signals or whatever. So not just snatch it from them. She disposed it. So because sometimes they do come out even if you hang up. I mean, especially for old people or people who are registered with the cops, like they feel like, oh, maybe they, they just had enough strength to call nine one one. So let's go see. You know. So whatever. Um, y'all. So. Veronica and Catherine in jail and Jim and David is in jail, y'all. So Veronica and Catherine, they all standing at the desk. Um, of course, this is fictional because you do not stand with your homegirl and take off your stuff. And you don't do it in the middle of the whole, it, to me, look like a police department. Not that I know. I, for real, I ain't never been to jail, thank God, because I would die. But I mean, well. You can't really say stuff like that because you will die in jail nowadays. But I would probably go crazy. Like, I would be crying. Like, somebody would make me their whole, like, day one because I just can't. I don't know. When I see gray in walls, I just get nervous. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, Veronica had to take off her wig. I was like, go ahead, girl. And I'm like, Catherine, come on now. You don't know black girls wear wigs or whatever. But. That little police officer is not playing, y'all. She knew that she had on his wig. Like, yeah, take off the hair. Take off the girdle. Y'all, I was rolling. And Catherine gonna say, can I go in a private room? For what? And I'm like, Catherine, ho, 
how many people your husband and put in jail? You don't know the procedure, girl, or whatever. And you okay? Who wear girdles? Y'all know that little shimmy she did to uh get it off, girl. Ain't no size eight. Uh, I don't even say go down to twelve. Ain't no size twelve and higher shimmying out of a, a girdle. That's ass. You gotta lay down. You gotta suck. <laughs> I'll be out of breath. <laughs> So whatever, they take off all they stuff, and Veronica's gonna start rolling when she take her girdle off because Veronica took off her wig like a G. Like, all right, officer, you gonna play me in front of the home girl? Make me take off my wig, but all right. But when uh, Catherine was taking off her girdle, Veronica started rolling. And the funny thing is, I was laughing too, but uh, Veronica was gonna say she wasn't laughing that that was an evil laugh, but knowing her, it was a double sided laugh. She'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna get this officer, and aha, you gotta take off your girdle." So then Jim and David, y'all, once again, they got two men in the cell. And they got on these whole suits and had to, and they going to say, oh, do a cavity check, turn around and cough. Like maybe, okay, clearly they cannot show a naked butthole on this network or on this particular show. But I'm like, you know, they don't be doing no cavity search with your suit jacket still on. But whatever, y'all. Um... And then, I don't know, maybe I'm, okay, maybe I need to get my life together with this whole always looking at things in black and white. But, hey, how can you with the state, current state of the economy in the nation, right? But all I was looking at is how Jim handled the situation versus how David handled the situation. They was like, take off your belt. When David took off his belt, he took off his belt and he kind of handed it or kind of tossed it. Uh, Jim, the white guy, you know, he going to take it off. He going to throw it at the cop. You know, you can't throw no belt at no cop and nothing happened. And then, um, what else happened that, oh, the cough thing, when David turned around, he was just like, oh, and just cough, like, oh, I know I gotta do it, but of course, Jim gonna be like, Ugh, like, do it all regular, I'm like, <laughs> Jim would've got, like, knocked out in real life, like, for real, for real, so whatever, y'all, so they all in jail, or whatever, 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 so meanwhile, Maggie Day and Landon is at the office just trying to calm down all this turmoil, everybody's seen them get arrested, right? So, um, Landon all chilling in David's office with his feet on his desk. So Maggie come in here like, uh, uh, what you doing in my boo office? Get your feet off his desk or whatever. She was like, I'm going to handle this. We're going to leak a story. We're going to say David has nothing to do with this. And it was all Jim and Veronica fault. And so Landon finally picked up on it. Like, what's the deal? Like, do you like him or what? She was like, I like him just like how you like Jeffrey. And he made a good point. Landon was like, but Jeffrey is single. I was like, go ahead, uh, Landon. Or whatever, excuse me, y'all. And then um, she just admitted, like, yes, I like him. He deserves better, and I'm better. And truth be told, I'm mad that my little advances ain't working. I'm like, look here, little single white female. Veronica crazy, but come on now. You need to fall back, or I don't know. That's just what I think. Um. So, yeah, they plan to, she planned to plant this on veronica she even showed that she showed landon that veronica was cheating i was like oh maggie getting dirty y'all veronica evil is all get out but i don't know why i just maggie just get on my nerves for some reason still once i saw her i was like oh yeah there go that girl again um so y'all the da the da is all at the crier house i'm like oh you gonna arrest the parents and then go straight to their house lisa mcdowell come on now so Lisa McDowell tell Wyatt, like, oh, just lay low. Your parents going to be in there for the weekend. Um, I'm going to help you get your life together. He was like, no, I got to disappear. My parents hate me now. I got to be on the run. She was like, no, you good. They love you. And he was like, I do have an inheritance, but it was signed over to my parents because I was on drugs. And she was like, well, give me such and such paperwork, and I'll try to get you the money. So he happy, y'all. He's smiling. Um, so he, he got this whole big mansion to himself. No Celine, no nobody else. He about to get some inheritance. Like Jeffrey is uh not Jeffrey. What's the son name? Oh, Wyatt. He he ready for action. I know I would well, first of all, I would never do that. Um, even if my parents put me in jail, I wouldn't uh, I would I well like I already told you I never call the cops, but um I, so I wouldn't have put my parents in jail, but if I was him, oh I would have been having a party already. Like it probably would have been a party while Lisa McDowell was uh already coming over <laughs> so y'all jim and argue uh jim and david argue in a cell about veronica you know uh somebody was like oh is it Wyatt's fault or is it veronica fault 
and um jim kind of feel like you know i had wyatt under control it was veronica who was adding the extra and david was like your son been out of control for a long time or whatever so don't be blaming my wife or whatever and then jim called a uh, veronica a bitch now she kind of is but that is his wife so whether unless you like really about to break up with your wife or y'all on the, the verge of divorce and then sometimes even then you don't let that happen but no husband should in my opinion let any man call their wife a bitch or the mother of their child like even if i hate you and we broke up like hey you're not about to disrespect my baby mama like what are you doing or whatever but i do get it like veronica got his son raped and he already been raped before so i get it y'all but I'm sorry, I am here for David uh, taking up for his wife. That is his wife at the end of the day. We cannot sit here and judge and be like, oh, he shouldn't be with her. We, How many bad boyfriends or how many of our homegirls have horrible boyfriends? And we be like, girl, don't be with him. Don't be with him. And they still do it. So this is just the same situation in the reverse. Like the wife is trifling. And... You know, everybody saying don't be with her to be with her. But hey, when you love your homegirl, she be like, oh, I love him. <laughs> but, you know, so that's how David has been. And I, I just can't fault him for that. He married that woman over 20 years ago. She ain't been this mean forever. Jeffrey just came out. So we just now finding how much she hates gay people. Um, She never uh cheated this whole 20 years. So she just now cheated for the first time. So we can't expect David's 20 years of marriage or let's say 15. I don't know. I'm just guessing because you know why uh, Jeffrey is like about 20 something. So I'm just kind of going off of that. So you not going to hate nobody just because they had one year. All right, we'll give them three years. The last three years since they have, have not been on. That doesn't erase 20 years of marital bliss. They there was no signs that they've been having trouble for the whole 20 years, you know. So hey, they just starting this breakup process. So I understand him going hard for his wife. Anyway, David's gonna be like, Yeah, if something happened to my wife, oh, you're gonna really see uh enemy or whatever. And he was like, Call it off. And Jim was like, Call what off? So what that mean, y'all? Do he know about the hit or he just know Jim enough to know how like whatever you got going on, call it off. So we'll see, y'all. So, um, and I so wanted David to take off on him when he, cause he called her bitch like two times. So the second, well, first time when he warned him like, Hey, don't do it. And the second time he did, Oh, I wanted David to take off on him. But you know, he in jail, David, keep it together. Keep it together, homie. Y'all. So Benny called Hannah. Hannah all laid up at the motel hotel holiday inn with the grandson in the other bed. And Benny called was like, Hey, I know you hate me. You mad at me, but I love you. You my mama. And guess what? Veronica looked at all the paperwork and everything is legit. So even though Candace got this house illegally and bezel money, we don't know. Hey, it's ours. It's legit. We not going to go to jail for it. Your house burned down. We poor. So how about we just live here and I work at the tow yard and we keep the house. We keep the cars. Like, yes, it was gotten in an ill-gotten manner. Is that a phrase? Ill-gotten is a phrase. But, but hey, like, let's just accept this blessing in disguise. There's nothing we could do about it. We're homeless. And Hannah, you know, she just go all in. I'm not staying in no house. The house is evil. F you, F your sister, F your couch. Bye. But Benny was like, you so used to struggling that you don't even know how to accept a blessing. Now, I'm torn on this, y'all. I do feel like sometimes as, as a people, sometimes we are so used to struggling that we don't recognize blessings. So a small part of that. But I do understand where Hannah coming from. I just cannot comfortably live in a place. I have been living by myself. I think I got my first apartment. I want to say maybe 20, so 11 years. And it's hard paying rent. I don't have, I've never had a roommate. My husband is my roommate now. <laughs> but before him, I lived by myself for five years. And it's hard. There's people who I could have moved with. I could have lived in like a, you know how people buy like buy four bedrooms houses and everybody have a room and then y'all all pay a few hundred dollars. And mind you, I live in California. So you know the rent. All rent is over 65% of your income, you know? So, well, I can't say that because everybody make different miles, but it's high, you know what I'm saying? And there's so many, I could have lived in shelters. I know a couple people who lived in shelters for like a year until they got themselves together to buy. So I could have went that route, but I just can't do that. I can't live uncomfortably. When I lay my head, wherever I get naked at, <laughs> I have to feel comfortable. I could have lived with a homegirl. I could have stayed with a boo 
that who I really didn't want to be with, but just because the rent was free, I just stayed with them and lived there. You know, I could have did all that stuff, but no, I, I have to be comfortable when I lay my head. I cannot be thinking the house could get snatched anytime, police could come and see you. So I get where Hannah's coming from. Like, I don't, I'd rather stay in a motel. And you know what? I have. I stayed in a couple motels, like, before I actually got an actual apartment. Like, I spent some nights in some motels because I'm like, hey, I'd rather not waste my money, but I'd rather just sleep in a hotel motel or something like that until I could get it together versus calling somebody, can I come over, can I sleep on your couch, and, you know, they be having kids, they be having men, they be doing drugs, whatever, you don't know what people do in the house, you know, so, hey, I get it, but whatever, I don't know, like Benny said, mama, what we gonna do, you ain't got no money, um, we ain't got no house, so we gotta do something, so, hey, she hung up on it, but we'll see what's gonna happen, um, so, back to Candace's house, y'all, and Q all dead on the floor, y'all. So, Jeffrey is just still freaking out. He, uh, she was like, oh, I'm gonna cover the body. So, she started covering the body, and then she tried to pick it up, and she was like, Candace was like, oh, I can't do it by myself. Can you help me? He was like, I'm not about to touch no dead body. I'm like, dude, the body just died. I'm not about to touch no dead body, but I don't touch a dead body, like, if I just, just... I ain't even about to say that. If something just, just happened and I'm either helping move them or something. Now, if it's a body that's been in the alley for three days, heck no, I ain't, I ain't uh, killing that. But I'm like, Jeffrey, you the killer. You touched him, but I want to go to kill him. <laughs> but whatever, y'all, Jeffrey not having it. He almost touches him to help Candace when she sees she can't pick him up. But then he just run upstairs, y'all. And first of all, uh-uh, Jeffrey, I know you tripping, but you getting blood all on my handrail up the stairs. You gonna take off your bloody sweater and throw it on my bedroom floor? Mm-mm. You can go ahead and leave there because, uh, first of all, murder 101, not that I know, but you can't just contaminate the whole house. Like, it's bad enough. Both of y'all got blood on you. You got to try to keep the evidence in this one little circle. You putting blood over the whole house. Like, now your whole house got to get cleaned or whatever. But if somebody died in my house, I would just do a whole house clean anyway. Um, But whatever, y'all. So she was like, just take a shower and calm down. Did y'all think she was going to get in the shower with him? Because I sure did. I mean, I know he gay and, you know, but I still thought they was going to take a shower together for some weird reason. <laughs> but anyway, they both take a shower. Why she got on a negligee when she get out the shower putting on her makeup? Y'all don't remember y'all got a dead body downstairs? And Candace could have been downstairs doing something while Jeffrey was taking a shower. I'm like, clearly y'all not no killers. But come on, Candace, you from the hood. You had your little war homies. Oh, yeah, call them to come get the body. War and the little homies, you know how they get down. You should be a better killer than that. <laughs> or even if you're a lawyer, like how to get away with murder, you know how to fix the crime scene, you know? So, Candace tripping a little bit. Why you gonna put on a see-through robe? You just took a shower. And y'all didn't even move the body. Y'all took a shower, and now y'all gotta go back downstairs and move the dead body. I'm like, y'all tripping, but whatever. I understand. You panic, you go crazy. When you have a partner who's flipping out, and you kind of level-headed, you do gotta come down to their level. Like, look, let's not get us caught up. I'm gonna calm down with you. We're gonna take a shower. We're gonna talk some more and figure it out. So I do kind of get... Maybe that's why she changed courses of what they were doing. But I was like, y'all crazy. Um, so y'all back at the jail cell, Catherine and Veronica all in jail, no wig, no girdle. So Catherine want to talk. And Veronica like, no, uh, girl, we in jail. Don't be talking. And she still want to talk. So Veronica was like, all right, well, let's shake on it. If we gonna talk, we only talking as your attorney. I'm your attorney. We not talking prisoner to prisoner. And Veronica's smart because we sure know that Lisa McDowell came down to the jail and told the check-in clerk, like, hey, watch this couple and watch David and Jim because, you know, I'm watching them. Prolong their phone call. Don't let them out till Monday and just keep eyes and ears. So Lisa McDowell is not playing with them. I'm like, geez. But come to find out, Veronica and Lisa McDowell got history. I cannot wait to find out what that is. I bet you something stupid like they was in debutante ball and Lisa McDowell won, so Veronica hate or something like that. But all we know, now we know that Veronica and Lisa McDowell, uh, Veronica said they got history that run deep. I really wanted to know what it was. But I'm like, why they gonna pin the two sisters against each other? <laughs> but, so we'll see, y'all. Um... So Catherine just wants to talk. She was just like, oh, maybe we should have got 
why it held long, long time ago. He ain't been the same ever since he been raped the first time. And she just kind of like pacified her. Don't worry. Just forget all about that. You are a good mother. Whatever Lisa McDowell and Wyatt are doing, it's not going to stick. So, you know, um, just fall back and calm down. Yeah, we might have to stay in here for the weekend. But until we get our phone call, we know lawyers. So we could just call them at home, whatever, whatever, whatever. So we will see you guys. Um, and that was pretty much it, you guys. So back at Candace's house, next thing you know, some police are outside. And that's how it ends. So, sorry again, y'all. So we'll see what happens, you guys. Candace goes to open the door. And, you know, it's a man police. So the first thing she thinks to do of is open the door naked. I was like, that was a good idea. That's some distraction. He ain't going to think you in here murdering somebody when you all naked. And then, you know, that nosy-ass white lady neighbor across the street, she gone. First of all, I'm pretty sure she the one who called the cops. Why? Because the car was in the driveway. It ain't your driveway. And then, of course, like, after the cop clearly leaves, after Candace, like, gets him out the way, then the white neighbor, all, first of all, all outside, first of all, you don't know how to be a real good neighbor, a real snitch neighbor, because you're supposed to look out the window, girl. <laughs> and then... Uh, when the police officer come back and be like, we good, the neighbor gonna say, what about the other guy? There was two guys in there. First of all, you're making her look like a hoe. Secondly, he already checked, girl. Leave him alone. So, we'll see what happened. I hope they don't get caught. And then another scene, we see Catherine and Veronica is still in jail. And Catherine makes some comment like, ooh, if I find out anything happened in Wyatt, in jail like my wrath is gonna be unleashed i'm like what's up with them uh releasing wrath wrath because <laughs> david said that david said that to uh jim hey if something happened to my wife oh you're gonna feel my wrath and now Catherine is saying it to veronica like hey if something happened to my son you're gonna feel your wrath so it's so cute how the best friend couples is like the wife from this side and the husband from this side is saying it to the opposite couple so that, i thought that was cute you guys so that was it you guys we're back with the haves and the have-nots. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my review. You know what's up? Give me the thumbs up on this video. Go ahead and check me out on Twitter at Tammy B underscore. And that is T-A-M-I, the letter B and the symbol underscore. All right, you guys. See you in the next review. Bye.